unconfoundedness is one very important assumption, and another important one is positivity. So what does positivity say? It says that for all values of covariates, acts that are present in the population, so anything with probability greater than zero, we have that the probability of treatment is greater than zero for all values of treatment. In this specific case, I've assumed that the treatment is binary, so another way of saying all values of treatment are greater than zero is just saying that the value of treatment equals one is between zero and one, exclusive. So why is positivity an important assumption? Well, so recall the adjustment formula. An important thing is that if we did not have positivity, effectively, we would be conditioning on zero probability events in the adjustment formula. To make this more clear, consider that x and y are discrete. Then we can rewrite the adjustment formula with summations here as follows. And if x and y were continuous, you would just use an integral here. Now we can rewrite this using Bayes' rule to make things a little bit more clear. Importantly, now we have in the denominator something that looks very relevant for the positivity assumption. Here, p of t equals 1 given x, if that were 0, which would be a positivity violation, then we would have division by 0. So satisfying the positivity assumption gives, it, gives us a guarantee that we won't be dividing by 0, that our adjustment formula will be well-defined. Similarly, if t equals 1 given x were equal to 1, then because t is binary here, that would mean that p of t equals 0 given x is equal to 0, and we'd have division by 0 in the second term. This was a mathematical justification for the positivity assumption, but we can also just give some intuition for this. So if this is the total population, and we're interested in some subset of this population where x equals little x, then if you imagine that everyone in that subset were given the control, they were not treated, then how would we know what it would be like if these if this subset were given the treatment. So everyone was not given the treatment, so how can we talk about a causal effect in this subset of the population? Similarly, if everyone were given the treatment, how would we know what it would be like if they didn't receive the treatment? So we wouldn't really be able to talk about the causal effect there. That's the intuition for why the positivity assumption is important. And in the previous slide, which you can go back to, you can see how the adjustment formula will actually be undefined if the positivity assumption is not satisfied. For another perspective on the positivity assumption, consider the concept of overlap. So sometimes you'll see people refer to the same assumption as overlap or common support. These all mean the same thing as positivity. Here, look at the conditional distribution of the covariates, x, given treatment or given control. So these conditional distributions look a lot like the positivity assumption, but the variables are flipped. We used to have conditional of t given x, and now it's conditional of x given t. But, you know, everything's related through Bayes' rule. If we were to visualize these distributions, say they looked like this, they're two uniforms that don't overlap at all. If they don't overlap at all, we have a severe positivity violation. If they were to overlap, then there is no positivity violation in among the covariates where there is overlap. But then in the covariates where there is no overlap, we have severe positivity violations, right? So that's because in these two x's, either everyone with that level of covariates received treatment or everyone received control. Similarly, if they completely overlapped, if these two conditional distributions, conditional covariate distributions given treatment overlapped completely, then we have no positivity violation. And this is what we want in general in order to have identifiability. And 
Overlap is just another way to look at the positivity assumption. This is just giving you a bit more intuition, a bit more understanding of this assumption. This brings us to the next question, which is, what goes wrong if we don't have positivity? You might be able to think of a few different answers of this, but it, it'll help your recall if you can repeat to yourself as many of these answers as you can think of. We just saw unconfoundedness and positivity as two very important assumptions for identifiability. However, they, they are trade-off in some sense. So for unconfoundedness, the general idea, which is not always true, but the general idea is that the more covariates you condition on, the more likely you are to have satisfied unconfoundedness. However, the more covariates you condition on, the worse positivity gets. To see this, consider these two conditional distributions from the last slide. If we just look at their supports, say we consider the case where they're 50% overlapping. This is in one dimension, when the covariates are only one dimensional. But in two dimensions, things get much worse. So if I just were to take that and extend it to two dimensions, you end up with only 25% overlap. This is if we were to condition on covariates, two covariates, right? So a vector of length two. Whereas if the vector was of length one, then we would have 50% overlap, um, which is better than 25% overlap. More overlap is better. And then if we go on to higher and higher dimensions, things go down exponentially. This is due to what's called the curse of dimensionality in machine learning. And this trade-off is very important to keep in mind when you're practicing causal inference. What would actually happen if you were to try to estimate the average treatment effect when you have a severe positivity violation? So we're depicting a severe positivity violation in the bottom here by showing that the covariate distribution, or the, the supports of the covariates in the control group, t equals 0, and the treatment group, t equals 1, do not overlap at all. And here's a reminder of what the adjustment formula looks like when x is discrete. What we'll do is we'll model this conditional expectation of y given treatment equals 1, comma x with a function, f1 of x, and we'll do the same with the conditional expectation for the control group with the model f0 of x. Then if I add some data here, so what are these points? The blue points on the left are the control group, and the vertical distance is their value of y, and the red group on the right is the treatment group, and the vertical distance is the value of y. These are color-coded because the control group will be fit with the F0 model, and the treatment group will be fit with the F1 model. But importantly, we have to sum over all x for both of these models, as you can see in the adjustment formula. So we need to know the value of F1 of x over here to the left, and we need to know the value of F0x over here to the right but we don't have data there. We don't have data there because we have a severe positivity violation. And you know what are our models gonna do? They have to extrapolate. They're forced to extrapolate because they need to sum over all x. And this extrapolation is gonna cause severe issues. So this is a consequence of having severe positivity violations and using a model to model the conditional expectation when that's the case. 